Hey, Blockchain Visionaries, I'm George Levy. In this video, we're gonna be addressing the topic of how many transactions there are in a block on the Bitcoin blockchain. This is one of the most common questions that I get from people, and many people get this wrong. This lesson is based on the best-selling course, Blockchain and Bitcoin Fundamentals, and a lesson from the Blockchain Institute of Technology. I hope you find the video valuable and that you learn in the process. Enjoy. Get ready to change the world, one blockchain at a time with George Levy, your single source of truth for blockchain, Bitcoin, and cryptocurrency. We will now talk about how many transactions there are in a block on the blockchain. And for this specific lesson, we will be talking about the Bitcoin blockchain. The focus of how many transactions fit in a block is very important to clarify because many people believe that every transaction is a new block on the Bitcoin blockchain. And that is not the case. As you will learn in this specific video, you will learn that there are many transactions that can fit within a block and that is limited by how many transactions will fit within what is known as the maximum block weight. The block weight within the Bitcoin blockchain is how you determine how big a block can be. Now the current block weight limit is 4 million weight units. The new Bitcoin blockchain size is actually called the block weight. It used to be called the block size and the block size limit was one megabyte. With the advent of segregated witness, that changed into what is now known as the block weight. And that raised the capacity to fit more transactions within a block. And currently the block weight limit is 4 million weight units. Now the block weight is measured in bytes. This is actually the equivalent of when you have a file, a file can be 50 kilobytes, can be one megabyte, five gigabytes. Well, specifically bytes are the units for the size of a file. Well, transactions have a certain number of bytes and the block weight is measured by how many bytes in total are within that block. Now, the transaction fees are also set based on the number of bytes in a transaction. Sometimes people think that just like in money, the more money you send, you have to pay a higher fee. That's not the case in Bitcoin. Now the miners who are actually creating the blockchain try to maximize their profits by getting as many high fee transactions as they can, which will fit within a block. Realize the current block weight limit is 4 million weight units. That means you can only fit as many transactions as will fit within that 4 million weight units. So when the miners are choosing which transactions to include in a block, they typically prioritize the transactions that have higher transaction fees associated so they can make the biggest profits from creating that block. It is possible to have a block with only one transaction. And I wanna put that specifically because I'm gonna show you an example. A one transaction block would be just a Coinbase transaction. That is when a miner creates the block, they create within it a transaction called the Coinbase transaction in which they reward themselves with new Bitcoins. So it is possible for a miner to create a block with simply just one transaction. But that's really not very usual because most miners want to maximize as much as they can, as much profits as they can. So it is much more common to have many more transactions within a block. What you are seeing is a block explorer. A block explorer is a tool that enables you to look at the contents of a blockchain. This is a Bitcoin block explorer, which lets you look inside blocks in the Bitcoin blockchain. What you're looking at right now is block number 693,715. And what you will find is that this one specific block actually has one transaction. I want to point out that to you because this specific block contains only one transaction. That transaction is the Coinbase transaction and the miner, which in this case was pooling, was able to actually get 6.25 new Bitcoins. But notice there are no fees. You will see that fee reward was zero. So the block reward was 6.25 new Bitcoins and the fee reward was zero. Why? Because there were no other transactions inside this block. Now let's compare that with this block. This is block number 703,517, and you will find that it includes 2,909 transactions. That is, this is also a block on the Bitcoin blockchain. Whereas I showed you block number 693,715, which had only one transaction, this other block is number 703,517, which has 2,909 transactions. 
Notice the block reward is 6.25. These are new Bitcoins that were generated when this miner actually created this block. But that miner also got a fee reward. The fee reward is the transaction fees for all the other transactions that are included within that block. In this case, 2,909 transactions which were included in this block. Notice that the block weight is under 4 million. As I mentioned, there are 4 million weight units, which roughly translates into megabytes. But the megabytes actually vary whether you're using segregated witness transactions or non-segregated witness transactions. But for the purposes of this lesson, I just want to point out to you that the weight is actually under 4 megabytes. Now, if we go to the Block Explorer, what you will find is that as of this moment, the latest block that we're seeing is block number 703,525. I will now take you to a different visualization which will let you see how these blocks are actually assembled. What you are seeing right now is a visualization of the Bitcoin blockchain showing you all the transactions that are currently waiting to be added to the next block on the Bitcoin blockchain. As you see all of these passengers waiting to get on the train, you will find that this visualization lets you see that there are currently over 8,900 transactions waiting to be included on the next block on the Bitcoin blockchain. Now, in order for someone to prioritize their transaction to be included on the next block on the Bitcoin blockchain, they have to pay a higher transaction fee. This entire process is a business which the miners are also participating in because as the miners create new blocks, they prioritize the transactions with the highest fees because they know that not every transaction will be able to fit in the next block. So as people try to get their transactions included in the next block, they pay a higher transaction fee. And the miners on the other side try to earn the highest profit possible from the transactions that they add onto their block because the number of transactions that they can fit within a block is limited. What you see is transactions that have been waiting to get added to the next block on the Bitcoin blockchain. This next block that is just being completed is block number 703,526. And very shortly, that block will be added to the Bitcoin blockchain. And now, the miners that have been creating and are working on the next block, which will be block number 703,527, will be prioritizing the highest transaction fees to be added onto that next block, which will be block number 703,527. And now, after we saw that visualization in which the next block was added to the Bitcoin blockchain, you will notice that the latest block, according to the Block Explorer at btc.com, is block number 703,526. This is the latest block. And if we drill, drill into that one block, what you'll find is that that one block has 2,657 transactions. And that miner, in this case, Poolin, was able to receive a fee reward of 0.25311343 Bitcoins, in addition to the 6.25 new Bitcoins that were generated with the creation of this block. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something in the process. I bring you brand new videos every single week, so make sure to subscribe to this channel. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I would love to hear from you. Until next time, I'm George Levy. We're changing the world one blockchain at a time. See you next time.